Welcome to my channel Lenovate. In this video, we will going to discuss about the renal tubular reabsorption and secretion that is taken from the chapter number 28 of the Garden Physiology. Before discussing the whole chapter and the absorption and secretion in different part of the renal tubules, first we should know what is renal tubular reabsorption and what is the definition of renal tubular secretion. So the renal tubular reabsorption is simply when the glomerulus filtrate fluid has been filtered from the Bowman's capsule and that filtrate when passes from the tubules of the renal capsule and from the successful part of the renal tubules, the useful substances before excreting into the urine, the useful substances from that glomerulus filtrate absorb from the tubules into the interstitium and then into the blood capillaries. And from the blood capillaries, that useful substances are go to enter into the circulation. So in this way, before excreting, what happens? The useful substances are reabsorbed and they are utilized by the blood. Now, 65% of the reabsorption takes place in the proximal conjugated tubule. That is important for absorbing the useful substances and prevent the excretion of any useful substance in the urine. The second phenomena is of the tubular secretion. The tubular secretion is simply the transfer of the materials from the peritubular capillaries that are present around the kidney tubules and into the renal tubule. From the peritubular capillaries, the substance are secreted into the renal tubule for the excretion. It is opposite to the reabsorption in which the substance are reabsorbed, but here they are secreted into the tubule for the excretion and they are generally the waste products. And certain ions that include the sodium and uh, that use the potassium and the hydrogen ion. Now, after what happens after the reabsorption and secretion has taken place, the left fluid, that is the left fluid after the reabsorption and secretion, this is called as the urine and that is to be excreted. So, in this way, the kidney works with the glomerulus filtrate and the use of substances are reabsorbed while the waste products are secreted from the blood into the tubules and then their final excretion from the collecting duct into the urine. That is a general mechanism of renal tubular reabsorption and secretion. Now, we will going to see in the successful part of the kidneys what is going to absorb and what is going to secrete. So the first part after the Bowman capsule is the proximal conjugated tubule of the kidney. The proximal conjugated tubule, here it is taking the cross section of the proximal conjugated tubule and this is lined by a layer of cuboidal cell with the microvilli. Here about 65% of the reabsorption of the substances take place and the substances that are going to reabsorb from the proximal tubule into the blood are sodium, chloride, bicarbonate ions, potassium ion, water, glucose and large amount of amino acids are also reabsorbed from the proximal conjugated tubule into the blood. While certain amounts of the substances that are secreted from the blood into the tubules include the hydrogen ion, organic acid and organic bases and some of the drugs are also secreted in the proximal conjugated tubule. But here you can see one important thing that the sodium and the water and all the solutes in the water are going to reabsorb in the same concentration. That's why this fluid that is remain inside the glomerulus fluid that is remain inside the proximal conjugated tubule is become iso or smaller. And isotonic fluid because same amount of the sodium and water is reabsorbed from the proximal conjugated tubule. So this is the reabsorption and secretion in the proximal conjugated tubule. Now in the next part, now in the next part of the kidney here you can see this is showing that loop of Henle that comes after the proximal conjugated tubule. The loop of Henle has two parts, the descending loop of Henle and the thick ascending loop of Henle. The descending part of the loop of Henle is having a simple columnar cells and this descending part of loop of Henle is permeable to the water but impermeable to the solutes. So what happens only water can be reabsorbed from the thin descending loop of the loop of Henle. So, when large amount of water is reabsorbed from the fluid that is going from the proximal conjugated tubule towards the ascending part, so what happens, there will be a large amount of water reabsorption and the solutes will left behind. So, the fluid will become 
hypotonic and what happens in the next step in the next step in the thick ascending loop of henle having the cuboidal and the columnar mixed cells this part of the loop of henle is impermeable to water and it is permeable to solutes so now here the water cannot reabsorb only solutes can reabsorb including the sodium chloride potassium calcium bicarbonate and magnesium so the large number of solutes are reabsorbed from the thick part of ascending loop of henle into the blood and the only hydrogen ion is going to secrete here and because no water is going to reabsorb so the fluid remain behind become the hypoosmolar because the osmolarity is because of the solutes but when the solute reabsorb the osmolarity will decrease and the remaining fluid will become hypoosmolar what happens in the reabsorption of this sodium chloride potassium calcium bicarbonate and magnesium this reabsorption occur by a specialized channel and the pumps here in the next diagram you can see these are the cells of the thick part of ascending loop of henle and here at the basal site you can see the sodium potassium atp pump and at the apical end we have two specialized pump the number one pump is the sodium hydrogen atp pump and this sodium hydrogen atp is a counter transport pump which causes the reabsorption of the hydrogen which causes the secretion of hydrogen and reabsorption of the sodium into the from the tubules into the blood and there is a secretion of hydrogen into the tubular lumen this is the tubular lumen so here is the secretion of hydrogen and reabsorption of the sodium the next pump here we can see is the one sodium two chloride and one potassium pump that is a very important pump in the thick part of ascending loop of henle through which the sodium chloride and potassium are reabsorbed now in the next part of the kidney tubule that is the distal conjugated tubule the distal conjugated tubule has again the two parts that is the early part of distal conjugated tubule that is the starting point of distal conjugated tubule and the late distal conjugated tubule with the collecting tubule so the early distal conjugated tubule is again impermeable to water and permeable to solutes so the sodium chloride calcium and magnesium are reabsorbed and the remaining fluid will again become hypo hypoosmolar and only 5% of the reabsorption take place no water can be reabsorbed and there will be only reabsorption of solute in this part of the kidney tubules now in the late distal conjugated tubule and the collective tubule the large amount of the secretion and absorption take place and it is a very important part to remember because here what happens here the sodium chloride and the potassium and bicarbonate are reabsorbed while the potassium and hydrogen are secreted back the hydrogen is secreted from the natural way from the sodium hydrogen pump that we have just discussed but the potassium is secreted from the specialized cells that are present in the distal conjugated tubule late part that is the principal cells of the distal conjugated tubule these principal cells are responsible for secreting the potassium into the tubular lumen the next cells that are present in the late distal conjugated tubule are the two type of cells the intercalated cells and they are intercalated a cell and the intercalated b cells the intercalated a cells are responsible for the managing acidosis like if there is an increased hydrogen they are going to absorb the hydrogen while the type b intercalated cells are going to manage the alkalosis condition when there is alkalosis in the body they will going to secrete the hydrogen to manage the alkalosis and neutralize it with the hydrogen ion so this is the function important present in the late part of distal conjugated tubule now what happens after this uh, large amount of the absorption and secretion the a fluid that is coming towards the distal conjugated last part that is the collecting tubule is now become hyper hypoosmolar why because the water has not just reabsorbed until the distal conjugated tubule but now in the late distal conjugated tubule after it enters the medullary collecting duct in this region the figure 28.14 we can see the medullary collecting duct region now the medullary collecting tree duct region that is under the influence of two hormones the adh and the aldosterone the adh there is an important hormone for water reabsorption is present and these receptors are present on the medullary collecting tubule what happens if there is a need of diluting urine or you know, need to know uh, you need to excrete about large amount of water in urine what happens the adh will not work and large amount of water will be excreted in the urine while if there is a dehydration condition you need to reabsorb large amount of water what happens the adh will increase and the adh will going to act on the distal conjugated tubule 
and the medullary collecting duct and there will be large and massive reabsorption of the water take place while the remaining will be the concentrated urine and in this way the body can manage the acidosis alkalosis condition and dehydration and overhydration condition so this was all about the diagrams and this was all about the chapter about the renal tubular acidosis and alkalosis we have just discussed and about the secretion and reabsorption of the kidney tubules so i hope you will be explained well thank you for watching subscribe for more and give feedback on our facebook page thank you for watching